So the, uh, this call today is about transformative cities, a uh, particular uh, initiative that's been uh, set up by the Transnational Institute in Amsterdam with uh, various other partners, including uh, Echelisa, my, um, uh, my home organization involved to uh, connect local activism for sustainable and just cities with uh, uh, a wider a translocal global community of inquiry. And here to talk about that, we have um, uh, one of the Abana Fellows, Emma Irwin, who's based in Transition Stirling in Scotland, a local activist who's going to give the place-based perspective on the conversation and Sol Trumbo from Transnational Institute who coordinates the Transformative Cities program. Uh, Emma is a, an Urbana Fellow, one of um, uh, 20 or so people who aren't in the Urbana Consortium but have stepped up to a, a deeper commitment in the project. And again, I can see several others of the uh, Fellows uh, here. Uh, so she's been at the first arena and will be with us throughout the process and these uh, these calls are in part a way to bring fellows more into the uh, into the project to uh, uh, provide the space to to hear from them their views and perspectives Sol isn't an Abana fellow and he was kind enough to step in at the uh, at the last minute when uh, Eric Palomares who is an Urbana Fellow who's the embedded researcher in the uh, Transformative Cities project was uh, unable to take part so Sol uh, very uh, very kindly and graciously stepped in as a uh, as a last minute replacement so thanks very much for both of you for uh, for being here today. So. The schedule of the call, we're going to just start with a, a bit of a conversation between Sol and Emma to, uh, to explore the different perspectives on uh, urban justice and sustainability that the Transformative Cities programme invites. And then we're going to go into a, a bit of group discussion based on looking at the structure of the Transformative Cities inquiry, looking at the questions that have been asked and thinking about how useful they are as a way to um, uh, to help urban projects think about what they're doing and communicate it to a wider audience and build collaboration. Then after that we'll come together as a group to share our insights and observations for the rest of the call. So I'll just start with uh, by bringing you in Sol and to ask you to uh, tell us a bit more about Transformative Cities, sort of why, uh, uh, why you initiated it and what you're hoping to achieve through it. Sure. Thank you very much, uh, Tom, and also Duncan and Lucia and Emma for participating and uh, to bring this opportunity. And hello, everyone as well joining. It's, it's really exciting to be here today and to have this chat with all of you. As Tom said, my name is Sol Trumbo. I'm based in Amsterdam where I work for the Transnational Institute, which is a think tank uh, who has been working for more than 40 years with social movements, policymakers, and scholars, trying to bring um, solutions to some of the global challenges we face. For Transformative Cities, um, why we, we started this initiative four years ago? It started um, from our interest on a new wave of political practices that we had witnessed since the financial crisis of 2008. You can mention the indignados, the Occupy Wall Street, the Arab Spring, and many others in other places of the world. And there's one particular kind of um, development, which was what is known as new municipalism, which uh, became particularly important from 2015 with the taking of municipal power from different political parties set up in the Spanish state. This, this, this strategy um, from a number of social actors to, to get this political local power spread rapidly and um, galvanized in the Fearless Cities Conference in Barcelona in 2017. So from our, that interest uh, of this new wave of political practices together with the long tradition of TNI of looking at local politics in different ways, for instance, um, 
working with many groups against the privatization of water, especially, but also other basic resources and other forms of local democracy, like the participatory budgets of Porto Alegre in the 2000s. So we decided to look at what, what was happening at the local level and what was happening at cities in particular. And we decided to do it in a way that it was completely new for us, which really put us out of our comfort zone, which was to organize a city award. So with this idea, we aim to hack the, the different kind of city awards that are around like the green cities, the smart cities and others. And it was out of our comfort zone because we believe in collaboration, solidarity, and not in competitiveness, of course. But we decided that organizing an award could be a useful way to bring visibility to those initiatives, always organizing these awards and fostering collaboration between the initiatives and knowledge transfer between the initiatives. So introducing this element of competition uh, was mostly about creating this interest beyond the traditional circles that will look at these kinds of initiatives. So this is how we did. And just in, in, in one minute for, to, to outline what we thought uh, will be the, the, city, the city award cycle, we organize an open call, which is very open, meaning that from social movements without a legal form to local governments, they can apply to present their initiative, the experience, and then based on those applications, the application form that we will discuss uh, later, uh, a team of evaluators with different expertises from different regions, very well balanced, we have three finalists per category. And the first year we focus on energy, water, and housing, and I can explain later why we, we did that. And the second edition, we added food, which is also the fourth category in the current edition, which is the third one. So we had three finalists per category, and then we commissioned local journalists to work with these finalists to present their story. So to dig deeper into the narrative, the know-how, the colors, the slogans that they use in order to, to create the, the, the capacity to, to change things locally, right? And with, with that uh, work with the local journalists, uh, we organize an online vote for a month. So each three of the, of the finalists per category, they, they mobilize their base and a global audience to get a vote. And the vote uh, works uh, through our website uh, online. And then the, the one who gets more votes, so that's a popular vote, then receives the People's Choice Award. And we close this award cycle with a, an event. Uh, it has happened in Amsterdam, the two editions, to announce to the world who has got the People's Choice Award, and then to use that opportunity to bring together these finalists, the winners, so they can exchange with, between each other, and then to use that opportunity for a, a bigger hook to receive media attention. And this is basically the award cycle, and we are now running the third edition. I think that's enough by now. Yeah, thanks, Sol. And I think it's worth pointing out we're at a particularly uh, important time in the award cycle. The time of this call is very nice because the application process for this year's call is open at the moment. So we'll be explaining during the call how you can apply if you want. And we're very much hoping that some of you will bring the exciting urban change initiatives that you're working on uh, into transformative cities through this. Just a quick note to encourage you, we will be time for discussion and chat towards the end of the call, but if questions, comments are occurring to you, then do feel free to add them to the, to the Zoom chat. We'll, we can't promise to answer all the questions that come up in the call. We'll do our best and we'll also harvest anything we don't cover and try to, uh, try to take care of that in the follow-up. Uh, so, and... Emma, as, uh, as a, uh, a local activist, I know you've been taking a bit of int an interest in uh, transformative cities in the run-up here. Would you like to just explain a little bit about your work in Transition Sterling and what your impression is of transformative cities in relation to that? Um, 
yeah, so uh, Transition Sterling is an environmental charity. Um, so we focus on increasing community resilience in the face of climate change. Um, we run several different projects. Uh, probably the, the one that we talk about the most would be that we have a library of things or a tool library. So people can come along and borrow things instead of having to buy them and we can share resources as, as a community. Um, we also run repair cafes, repair service, um, workshops on growing food and such like uh, and reducing waste. And then we've recently started a community fridge. So taking food that's going to go in the bin at local supermarkets and making it available to people for free. Um, yeah, so I was um, really interested in this because it's really um, inspirational to look into the different stories of other organisations that um, that are that are on the website and be able to get some inspiration from them. Yeah, and uh, as a as a as a city project, was the um, as participation in the in the call appeal to you? Can you can you see how it might benefit your work locally, Emma? Um, I think uh, even the process of going through the questions and um, uh, kind of delving into the different aspects because sometimes whenever you're when you're working on different projects, it's really easy just to really focus on the the little details of what you're doing at the time rather than thinking about it in a more holistic way. So. Even just the going through the application, I think, is is really important. It was was quite a good experience for me. Mm -hmm. So the application, something we're going to be taking a look at, and maybe coming back to you, Sol, maybe you'd like to explain a bit more about the structure of the inquiry. There's an application form that includes set questions. So maybe you could explain a bit about why you've set it up that way, but the uh, why you think this. Um, uh, why you chose these particular questions and topics. Yeah. The, the set of questions can be divided in three main blocks. One is what is understood as public policy formulation. And particularly for me, who is not by any chance a scholar on public policy, just learning through, the, through doing, and public policy understood as a very broad concept. So it's not only kind of, a, 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 it's not necessarily a policy that is top down. It can be some, a policy that is really being pushed for the, for the down up. And, and to understand how this happens and how this um, demand from the grassroots gets uh, institutionalized and we are in, in interesting on the process of design you know, of the initiative how it's implemented and then how it's evaluated um, because the evaluation is very important in, the, in this award because we only look at initiatives who have achieved something already so it's not about having particular good plans but really about having achieved something through the years so this first block is this, this public policy implementation. The second one is digging in deeper into the strategies to achieve the goals set by the, the group or the collective. So this includes political strategies, uh, cultural strategies, and also financial strategies. And so, yeah, political strategies in, it can be from mobilization to dealing with institutions cultural strategies could be from the use of social media and digital marketing to the songs or the narratives that are used by the collective and the financial has to do with yeah which kind of resources are being put in place are the resources who were existing previously being used now and why and the last block has to do with the lessons learned from the initiative and how the knowledge can be transferred or is already being transferred. For instance, in, in, in several locations, the initiatives who participate are actually networks already, are probably effective local initiatives who have been able to spread their initiative in other places. That happens a lot with local cooperatives, for instance, who provide, for instance, uh, green energy uh, that then gets replicated elsewhere. 
So these are the three main blocks of the questions. And just to mention that the application form has been improved every year. So every year we have included first the feedback from the applicants themselves, secondly from the evaluators who look at this application form every year. So we are adding new and new questions every year or reformulate it a little bit. Thanks, Sol. Um, having, having, I guess, taken a look at the, the application and the, the questions asked, Emma, uh, I'm wondering if you'd like to share any impressions you have on the, the structure of this service uh, inquiry, the particular focus of the questions, and you know, and whether how you found it as uh, in terms of your self understanding and reporting as a as a city based initiative. Yeah, I found it really um, really interesting. Like even like the first question um, where it's talking about right at the beginning, like why did you? Um, what did you want to achieve at the beginning? Um, sometimes whenever you're, as I say, working project to project and really stuck in the, the tiny details of what you're doing, it's hard to remember what you actually started off with <laughs> and um, see how you're, how you're doing compared to that. Like, are you still staying true to the original aims of the, of the project or the initiative? Um, so I find that really interesting. Um, and um, also, again, because we work a lot project to project, we always look at the targets of that year. So um, it made us look at the, the achievements of what we've been doing from the beginning. So we've been, we've been running the tool library since 2016. Um, and it was the first time that it actually calculated the carbon from the beginning of the project rather than these year to year things. And it's quite great to really take a wee step back and have a look at what you've done overall. Um, uh, and also made me think a lot of the things that um, that we always said we would do, but we haven't. <laughs> so there's like there were loads of things where it was like, oh yeah, we're going to do that. That's never happened. <laughs> so it was good to to make a note of those and maybe revisit them. Cool. Thanks, Emma. I just want to want to mention my own personal experience of uh, transition Sterling. Sterling's a place I've often uh, passed through and uh, uh, there was a journey I regularly used to make where I'd often have quite a long wait between getting off a train and getting on a bus so one day I just decided to take a, a wander around the town and very close to the train and bus station a few minutes walk away so this lovely tool library this great place to go in to sit there's some nice uh, transition sterling activists to uh, to talk to it's really nice to see your uh, chance across your presence in the center of sterling that was a few years back now you mentioned that, I remember it. <laughs> I didn't realise that this whole time that that was you. <laughs> yeah, funny how these connections come around again. Yeah. Well, it's also, this is, uh, I believe it's the third year of Transformative Cities now. Um, I wonder maybe if you could, um, looking back over uh, the project to date, you could share a few of the, the key insights from the previous years, particularly anything you might have found surprising or uh, unexpected about what's uh, what's come up. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. No, actually, as also Emma said, to, to prepare for this webinar also gave me the chance to, to look, think again, okay, so what we're actually trying to achieve and what are we actually achieving? And yeah, it has been a massive learning process, really. Um, as I said, also because we started really out of our comfort zone doing this award. And the outcomes of the, of the initiative can be seen broadly in two main blocks. One is the, the, the research component, because we are research institute and think tank, so this is what our expertise in, in, in is. Um, but also the communication component um, is the other big column because uh, yeah, we were eager to, to bring visibility to these initiatives um, and to try, and try to, to start to have some sort of mechanism where we can know where to, where to look at when looking not only from expiration, but also for how things are doing in practice. Um, so some of the some of the things we have learned has been first that is is very difficult to actually get uh, applications uh, submitted, especially from the global south and particularly Africa and Southeast Asia, and and that of course has to do with the with the different 
uh, with different circumstances from activists in different regions of the world. So we, we have been able to receive uh, quite easily applications from Europe and North America because of course initiatives have first more access to the internet and then more capacity to, to just uh, sit and write. So that has been a particular challenge uh, to, to receive applications. And we have done different efforts to overcome that, like uh, organizing interviews with groups uh, in the global south who wanted to apply but didn't have the, the, the time to, to really reflect on, on things. So that, that, that has been very valuable uh, practice to organize these interviews with local groups because otherwise they don't really find the time to, 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 to fill an application that can be time, quite time consuming if it's the first time also if you do such a thing. A second big lesson has been how the vote, the online vote has really triggered uh, a lot of capacity from the local groups to work strategically uh, towards the media and the broader public, not only because they have the chance to bring their story to a global audience through the work of, with the journalists and also with the platform of Transformative City, but also particularly for the local community because they really use the, the vote to, to bring attention to their base to say, hey, we, we are doing this thing, you can help us just vote, the, just vote us. So in that, all the initiatives have really used the opportunity in a broader way that we thought. So they organize local meetings, physical meetings to explain about the awards, they print flyers, they did social media campaigns, they, they did all, all kinds of things we didn't even, even imagine at the beginning. So that, that has been very inspiring to see. Then um, working with media outlets has been also very, very useful for us uh, in this way. Uh, we have learned more about how to tell the story of local transformation to a broader audience. And finally, um, also, yeah, as I said, we were always really shy about the issue of giving an award. Um, so we didn't even call it, uh, we didn't even give it a prize in the first edition. So we just said, okay, this, this group has more votes. But then it, it, some groups felt uh, something was missing, uh, especially the, the ones who, who won the energy category from the uh, energy transition initiative in Cadiz in the south of Spain. They said, well, we have won and we, we did a, a kind of a, a local party event and, and we didn't have a prize. So you should give us a prize, you know? And so we did. In the second edition, we had even a, a physical prize that we designed and we give it in the ceremony. And, and yeah, I, we understood that indeed, if we are organizing this, we, we just have to go along with it because if, if local groups participate, it's because in a way they want to win and not be, because they want to compete with others, but because they are really using this opportunity for, for, yeah, for, their, for their own goals. So that has been also interesting. And, and at the same time, some other groups said, well, I've, I felt shy about promoting myself, even though they are doing amazing things and more people should know about it. There is this still this kind of feeling of being a bit shy of, of while doing these great things for the community. So yeah, this will be the my main some of the highlights I wanted to, to share with you. And Emma, for your you know, last intervention in this round, I'm just wondering if um, you know if there are uh, you know any any reflections, any insights that have come up for you. If, you know, anything Sol's just talked about these creative ways, initiatives used it, all the different ways for taking advantage resonates with you or any other observations you've got on the, uh, you know, the, the value of the, uh, of the award as a, uh, as a tool for promoting transformative action in cities? Um, yeah, I think any kind of um, award or accreditation is a really good opportunity to um, have an extra boost in publicity locally so we love anything that, where we can like ask people to get involved and click something because people feel really involved in it and then um with stuff like that they're really happy to share it with their friends and stuff so yeah i find that that kind of stuff really really helpful and also um any excuse for a press release locally is good so <laughs> we always find that um if, if there's anything that's like it doesn't like that's exactly the kind of thing that we love putting in the paper and that's exactly what gets people in the door so yeah 
Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. So that's a that's some context on the, the two perspectives that were.